All right, well, I wanted to do a hopefully quick video on this um, Power and S uh, WR meter that I got. Um, I actually got this for parts are not working. I, really, all I cared about was, well, if it was working, it was going to be a bonus. But um, what I wanted to do was uh, uh, to create a, a, a true uh, peak envelope power meter. So I was going to modify the circuitry. So I wasn't too concerned if uh, this circuitry here didn't work, if the SWR bridge uh, wasn't working. That'd be a problem. So I got it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the, the meter movement was uh, it was broken. I've taken it apart already here. You can see it was, it was this movement here. This one uh, still does work. Um, this was the one that was broken. Uh, it had fallen off of, um, let's see if we can zoom in and I'll uh, show you how this works. So there are, um, let me see if I get a pointing device here. There are uh, two pins, let's see right here and on the other side that are, are kind of held in by these two screws and um, the inner part kind of just floats on these two pins and uh, when I got it the uh, the rear pin had actually become dislodged from the socket there's in the back of the screw there's a socket and the pin which is on the inner part sits in the socket um, and it had been uh, become dislodged became dislodged and um, I tried uh, unscrewing this and trying to relodge it, but um, I had to, you know, you'd have to take the whole thing out. And I wasn't sure exactly how these worked at the time. So um, I ended up desoldering it and pulled it out and kind of bent this and kind of broke some of this stuff here. Tried to put it back together before I realized that I actually had severed several of the wires here. So some of the, several of these thin wires you can see one is broken. So this is basically junk at this point. So I'm thinking my whole my whole project is off with this meter. But hey, maybe I can find um, some some other movement um, and either reuse it or replace it. So um, on eBay and uh, AliExpress, I did locate. Um, there's there's a whole range of different movements. Really, what you're looking for is um, I think these are 100 microamp uh, movements. So in order to work correctly, you know, with this circuitry, pre-existing circuitry, you'd want it, you know, to be the same type. But I found this. I think these. This was like 20 bucks, maybe shipped, maybe a little bit more. These are not uh, terribly inexpensive, unfortunately. But I was thinking I could either transfer if if these were identical, which I was trying to look to find one uh, that was identical, hopefully transfer the contents of uh, this one into this one, or possibly transfer the label from this one to this one, which would kind of more be ideal, but um, from the looks of it, most likely damage, probably most likely damage this label. In removing it so I think the first the first thing to see is whether we can transfer a working movement from this um, working actual the actual movement uh, from from this uh, meter to this meter um, so the first thing that you want to do that that I actually did not do correctly which caused me to break the previous one in in, in one of the ways that it was broken was uh, de you have to desolder these wires, obviously, and um, you want to remove uh, all the excess solder from the tabs so it'll slide out. So I desoldered them and you know removed some of the uh, excess solder, but not all of it. So it didn't really want to come out, and it kind of uh, pulled. Here we go, pulled pulled on this and uh, caused uh, this to, to be pulled out and, and so on. So so that actually ended up cracking this. I've super glued it, but obviously you want this loose. This one has not been, <clears throat> the new one obviously hasn't been soldered yet. There's some glue on there. You obviously want to make sure that's broken loose. And uh, these are also 
taped in uh, in some way. This you can see obviously this is taped. It's just uh, staying in here. Let's see if we can get this out. Um, where's the tape? Well, there's there's adhesive on it as you can see. So yeah, that's um, that's something to look out for getting these out of here without hurting anything. So I'm going to look into plan A, replacing this uh, movement, plan B, replacing this uh, label, because obviously these labels are different. Uh, so the uh, that's, that's part of the uh, calibration or whatever you have there, um, it's going to be slightly off and you know, this one will do, uh, you know, 1.5 kWs, and this one will do uh, 20 watts. So these obviously are, you know, would not work. Um, so I'm going to have a look and uh, try to remove some of the uh, covers and see uh, which method is more feasible. I'll also fire up the uh, function generator and uh, get the movement moving and see um, you know, if uh, the uh, movements um, match up um, between, the two, uh, between the two meters uh, to, to, you know, to see if, if um, the specs of these are the same. Uh, the 100, I think it was 100 microamp movement. I'm not sure, does it say there? Nah, I can't really tell. So if one of them's you know like a seventy and one's a hundred or one's a one hundred and one's a two hundred or something, there you know obviously there's going to be further uh, calibration problems. So that that is also important and you know going to depend on uh, whether this will work out. Um, when you're buying these on AliExpress or eBay, the 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 spec sheet or the data sheet isn't necessarily available, or you you can't necessarily trust it even either. But um, I figure there aren't too many of these movements available so if we got lucky we got the same one if we didn't get lucky we didn't get the same one but it may still uh, uh, require the same amount of current to drive the movement um, if we got double unlucky it's a different movement or even potentially the same movement but uh, slightly different spec and uh, it's either going to be incompatible or um, yeah, some sort of calibration, <laughs> separate calibration is going to be required to uh, to bring it into uh, calibration. So all potentially complicated. Uh, obviously, if you're going to do any calibration, which in the, you know after this I'm going to have to do some calibration. Um, you're going to want another uh, power meter to uh, that that's accurate in order to uh, try to bring uh, the one that you've been playing with. Uh, into calibration. So I'll quit uh, babbling on and uh, have a, a closer look at these and see what may or may not be feasible. I'll be back. All right, well, let's get some more light in here. This looks a little dark here. Uh, there's some good enough. Probably not. Can't do anything. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so I got the, I have this hooked up now to my um, function generator and I'm, I'm running uh, 400 uh, uh, millivolts through it and it looks to be about full scale uh, by the peak at least so let's um, switch this to the new movement and uh, let's see if we get something similar or you know what I should probably start it let's start it at 200 millivolts just to see if uh, and we'll do the re we'll do the uh, we'll do the uh, other one just to make sure okay looking similar let's give it a little bit more ooh could be slightly more that's 400 Unless the scale is slightly different. I guess what would be more accurate is to measure the amount of travel. Um, you know what? I think that's probably going to be about the same.
possibly. <laughs> uh, you know what, if it's a little bit different, we should be able to calibrate it out, but it looks, it looks pretty similar. So, let me, let me reduce it to 300. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if these age over time. I wouldn't think so. Uh, maybe the magnets uh, decrease in uh, mag magnetism. Hmm. So, yeah, these may not be exactly uh, the same, which, you know, from the factory, they probably aren't either, so, which is why they obviously build in... Uh, all the uh, calibration uh, potentiometers you see here um, because uh, these movements are probably probably not exact so oops I should be putting that on its face <clears throat> okay let's um I wonder if these scales are the same uh, there's a They, they do look to be the same scale. So, yeah, we probably have a little variance uh, in the movement. Um, this one seems to do a little bit more with a little less power. Let's, so that's, let's get into almost the end of scale. Let's, let's move it back over. <clears throat> There's also a capacitor on this one. So, that actually may be having an effect as well. Uh, so, but in any case, we're, we're going to have to calibrate this. So, um, it's not going to matter too much. I, you know, the, the capacitor probably is having, uh, it will have some effect. So, yeah, they're not exactly the same, but I think that they're probably made to the same. Uh, they tried to make them to the same specification. So, uh, I think we're going to go ahead. They're not... They're not dramatically off. <clears throat> and um, let me slow this down too, because if the cap capacitor needs a little bit more time to charge up, that may uh, that may have some effect as well. So there's kind of the peak. Probably, probably don't want to keep it charged. Uh, maybe we should run it a little bit faster. It's about a little bit faster. So we don't do full scale. Let's let's keep it. Let's hold it a little bit longer. A little bit longer. Yeah, I like that. All right, let's try this one. So if, if charging the capacitor up is part of the uh, issue, uh, we can overcome that. You gotta be careful with these two. I could almost easily screw this thing up. Okay, that's still it's still more, but it's actually it's actually pretty close now. So I think the capacitor. So that's interesting. I'm giving it 300 uh, millivolts, and uh, it, you know it's actually very close to where the other one was, which I believe it was you know just this this tick mark right before the five here. And this is pretty much exactly full scale. So, uh, not sure how much current it's giving it, but anyways, uh, next, uh, it'd be nice if I could just switch these, uh, s s these, uh, labels out, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Be back. All right. Well, as you can see, one of these is removed. Uh, I took this one out first. It's the one that I didn't need. It was also in front of the other needle. <laughs> Just to see if, if I, I broke this. Well, we, we learned something and we still have this one. Uh, but it came out fairly easily. Um, you can see it did leave this, uh, is that a magnet? I think it's uh, maybe just a piece of metal. Um, did leave that in there, so that's interesting. Uh, we'll have to uh, probably use the same one. So anyways, these ones just have the one screw right here. I've uh, removed the glue on the back, so it should hopefully just come out. And uh, I just gave it a light push and it came. This one, however, does not want to be 
so easy. Um, so that's unfortunate. You can also pry a little bit on this, but you got to be very gentle with these. Um, I'm gonna have to do this off camera because I don't want to have to be looking through through a lens to at this. This uh, yeah, be back. All right, this one was more difficult. I'm not sure why. Maybe just a tighter fit. You can pry it, but you have to be very careful. You don't want to damage anything. It shouldn't shouldn't take too much to come out. If it does. It may not come out how you want it to. So there we have the movement uh, removed. Um, so, time to put this in here. Um, let me, uh, while we have this out of here, let's uh, connect this and get a inductance reading from it. Um, what do we have here? 32 uh, millihenries. Hopefully that's accurate. Probably can figure out the current from that. All right, I'm gonna, again, off camera, try to position this in here. All right, well, I was able to get uh, the new movement in here. Um, uh, these these both bound a little bit at first, so I had to bend one of them. They're actually different colors, which uh, I actually think I like that. <laughs> Be a little neat, unique. Uh, people see that, what? What's going on there? But, but anyways, um, looks like it's gonna work. Um, I'm gonna, of course, test it and put these screws in here. Maybe we'll throw up uh, uh, some more um, uh, signal generation uh, on here and, and see if we can get some some movements and whatnot so I'll uh, go about that and uh, be back momentarily all right well we have some uh, some <laughs> waveforms going on there a little bit of a uh, arbitrary noise with the some offset and uh, just a, I think it's a, a square wave on the other one. So, a little fun, little science fiction. Anyways, um, so I think it's pretty much all back together. Just gonna solder it up, throw it back in that capacitor, and I'll put it back in the meter. I do plan on eventually um, making a uh, PEP, peak envelope power uh, circuit to uh, stuff in the box as well. Um, so, Maybe I'll detail that if and when I get to it. Um, TRX Lab, a uh, good YouTube channel. He's uh, he's also uh, created a circuit. That's actually where I'll be getting the uh, uh, circuit, uh, the schematic for for the one I intend to build. So and he uh, he actually made it, made it for uh, this model as well. Um, what is this model? Might be helpful. Looks like it is not, did I miss it? Must be here. No, it's not. Anyways, I'll, I'll probably include it somewhere because I'm sure there's a model uh, associated with this. Um, this also did have a uh, incandescent lamp and I'll probably just toss in an LED lamp too. Um, so you can see it kind of discolored. I don't know if that's from the glue or from the heat of the lamp, but uh, yeah, that's the only reason that these would need power. Otherwise, when you add the PEP circuit, that does uh, require power. So um, yeah, hope if you hope this helps. If you've been messing around with um, one of these uh, movements and <laughs> you've come into some issues, um, Hopefully this will uh, show you kind of uh, how they can work uh, before you end up destroying yours uh, like I did my first movement. All right, all right, one final shot here. Uh, we got everything back together. Well, every everything back together? Now we got the, the front part back together here. Um, let's see, I'll kind of show you this here. Kind of maybe. Um, 
got an LED uh, in there. You can't see it from the other side. Had to actually um, sand it, sand it down to, to get it in there because it was not the same size as uh, uh, well, a little bit of glare there. You can kind of see it. Not the same size as the uh, bulb that was in there before. So uh, it's a I, you know what I didn't test it. I hope it's a, a clear white one. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it'll look a little funny. So, anyways, uh, pretty much back together. Of course, got to put it all the way back together and uh, try to calibrate it with my other meter. It'd be nice to have an accurate meter. But um, yeah, looks looks like uh, this uh, repair uh, will will have worked out.